Welcome to the Artist Academy podcast, the audio version of our Facebook Live series, Art Talk Tuesday. I'm your host, Andrea Earhart, and I am so excited that you're here to catch the weekly replay of my laid back yet very inspiring conversations with other full-time professional artists. The purpose of this series is to show aspiring artists like you that it is completely possible to make a great career out of this art thing. And if you ever want to join us live and have your questions answered in real time by myself or featured guests, then just hop over to facebook.com slash groups slash artist academy every Tuesday at 8 p.m. Central Standard Time. I'll see you there. This episode is sponsored by the Artist Academy Advanced Membership, a program for artists who want to up-level their art game by taking it from a hobby or a side hustle to a full-time art business. I've been a professional artist for over five years with paintings in several different countries and a client list that includes high-profile companies such as Bass Pro, O'Reilly's, Duck Commander, and many, many more. So I figured out what it takes to build an art business, and now my heart is set on teaching aspiring artists like you to do the same. Go to advancedmember.com, that's advancedmember.com to learn more. This week's episode features yet another Artist Academy Advanced student who is booked out this holiday season. Her name is Sam Weeman. Sam has been a student for the past few months, and this conversation was our first official virtual meetup, and I'm sure the first of many to come because I thoroughly thoroughly enjoyed talking to her. We talked about a number of things, but something that really stood out to me was Sam's passion for animals, which ultimately led to art success within that animal niche. She has close to 100 orders to fill in the next month before Christmas, and all of those orders are similar in the animal theme. She reiterates what I feel like I say all the time, which is to make art because you love it, because you're passionate about it, and not just because you think it's something people will buy. People will pick up on your passion and that will ultimately be the reason that they buy. And I think Sam is a brilliant example of this topic. So let me know what you think about this week's episode with Sam Weeman. So do you want to just kind of give a little bit of a background and kind of tell everybody who's listening in on the podcast um, a little bit of who you are, where you're located, all that good stuff? Cool. Sounds good. So I am currently in Gainesville, Florida. By the way, I apologize if you hear my dogs barking. I have like a ton of dogs and they're all really loud right now. (laughs) And if you follow on her on Instagram, you will know that. (laughs) You'll see them. They're usually one of them is an employee of the month. They're very valued employees here in my studio. (laughs) But um, that being said, I am an animal person. So my background is actually not in art, but it's in animal science. So I'm more of a scientist and a lot of the jobs I've had before being a full-time professional artist have been doing a lot of research with with wildlife, with insects, with butterflies. Um, And I kind of have always been doing art as a hobby. When I was in high school, I actually was like so set on going to art school and that was my dream and that's what I wanted to do. But when I started getting some of my portfolio reviews from different schools, um, also I lived back in New Jersey, so that's where I originally lived. But I went to a bunch of schools to get portfolio reviews and all of them are like, you know, your work's good, but it's just, it's too much dog. It's just too much dog because (laughs) what all I drew and painted was dogs. And that made me realize I don't really want to do anything else than paint dogs. So I was like, never mind. you know, maybe I should go to school to work with animals instead. So that's what I did. And I went to Rutgers University um, in New Jersey and I studied animal science and I Loved it, but it was really challenging for me as an artistically brained person, um, you know, studying science. So I definitely struggled a lot in college. And it wasn't until after I was out of school, I had a lot of seasonal positions working with different um, endangered species that I was like, you know, I love what I do, but my passion is really with art. So I always kind of had an art business business on the side as a hobby artist. And I would paint on clamshells that I collected on the beach when I worked on the beach. And I just always managed to make a little bit of side income and have a side hustle with it. But 
after um, I got married and moved to Gainesville, where I've been living for five years now, I pursued doing work with butterflies. So I actually have been doing a lot of research with endangered butterfly species, and I still do seasonally, but I've kind of stepped back from that to pursue my art full time. And it actually happened to work out by kind of, I guess, the universe giving me signs um, that other positions did not work out for me. As much as I love doing research, I really wanted to work at an animal shelter because I do a lot of charity work, volunteering. I've actually used my art to do a lot for local rescues and shelters. And I actually had a position that fell through because of funding. So I was kind of offered a job and then it was taken away. And my heart was so broken over it that I'm like, you know what, I just need to do my art. And I didn't have anything else at the time. And it kind of just happened by default. Um, and to be honest, I was really scared to do art full time <laughs> and think that I could, as I'm sure a lot of you guys watching probably feel the same. You know, we're all in the same boat of trying to switch from hobby artist to professional artist. But for me, I kind of was just forced into it um, to see if it would work. And it has. And I've never been happier. And uh -huh. I'm also going to give a shout out to Lissa. I don't know if she's watching, but she's the one who actually had me join Artist Academy. And she uh -huh. was my first professional artist friend that really encouraged and inspired me and said, hey, you know, you should do this and you actually can make a living doing art. You know, it's hard and everything, but she's kind of been a mentor in a way and she helped encourage me too. Oh, I love so, that. Sorry, I that's like a lot. I just kind of threw out there, but that's just some of my backstory. <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah, it's good to know. Yeah. I knew, I knew, like, I picked up on bits and pieces just following you on, on Instagram and stuff, but it's good to know the full thing. It's so fun to, to me to hear, like, the background of the artist stories, how, like, you're like, I think I'm going to go this way, then I'm gonna, I think I'm going to go this way, and the universe is like, nope, you're going here. <laughs> no, nope, this is what's supposed to happen, and I mean, I hope that that it, it, I've been through so many frustrating periods to get where I am now, but I hope it gives inspiration to anybody that's watching that either, you know, you don't know what you want to do or you know you want to do art, but maybe you went to school or you're in school for something else, or maybe you didn't go to college, or you're not going to go to college at all, that, you know, you don't have to have an art degree to be a professional artist and be successful. You know, success comes yeah. in different forms and we get there in different pathways. So, yeah, definitely. I love everything about what you just said. <laughs> and I think you're a great example of sticking to a niche as well. And just a yes. niche that you love. And I think a lot of Absolutely. people just will just work to pay the bills and you have to do that obviously, but just sure, like sure. Go, doing the inside work of like, Hey, what do I love? You know, and yours is very much animals and you're like, I'm going to do that. It's just, it's, just a, a win win, you know? And Definitely. people can see it too. Like I can I know I can see that you're super passionate about it, which makes the buyer even more passionate. Anyway. Um so what was the tipping point that took you from hobby to professional? Was it uh the uh not getting that job and then going Yeah, it? so so I guess um for the past five years or so since I've lived in Gainesville, um I for the first year two to three years, I was working full time. I had a research position. I was managing a lab, a research lab, and I didn't really like the work. Um, I did it, you know, paid the bills, steady paycheck. That was great. I was doing my art on the side. That was when I first started doing art shows and festivals and started showing my work, but I didn't have the confidence to feel like I actually had enough income coming from my art to be able to mm -hmm. do that. So all the work that I was doing, um, a lot of research positions are funded off of grants. So it's more like temporary short-term work. So when funding ran out for the position I was doing, I hopped in another lab, was doing some management work there. Um, and I actually was very lucky in the positions I had that I had some really awesome bosses that um, I was working in a jumping spider lab. So I know that seems really random um, to a lot of people <laughs> um, to manage a lab that does research with jumping spiders and get paid to do it. But my boss was pretty awesome and loved my art. So we actually collaborated and I started doing educational coloring books and she paid me to do them. So I kind of led this initiative to help people hopefully not be so afraid of spiders by making cute drawings and outreach and educational materials. So that was kind of where um, science and art met for me. And I was doing that part time. And because I was only getting paid part time to work in that lab, I actually had like real part-time hours to work on my art rather than doing art with a full-time job. So I kind of transitioned doing half and half for a while. I was making it work financially. You know, I wasn't making as much as I had been when I was working 40 hours a week at a steady full-time job, but I was happier. 
And then when funding ended for that position and I kind of had to find some more part-time work that wasn't so steady, I, that was when my other job fell apart when I was supposed to work in an animal shelter and it didn't work out. And I was just like, all right, I don't have a plan B, so it's just going to be art. I need to see if I can make it work while I'm looking for other jobs. And I eventually just stopped looking for other jobs because I realized there wasn't anything I wanted to do more than my art. And, you know, I was financially becoming more stable and becoming more successful in a sense that I felt confident in what I was doing. So it kind of was just, again, the whole universe throwing me into that. Um, and that's one of my recommendations too. I know that you're going to ask in a bit more of, um, I guess what my advice would be for people looking to kind of go into a professional route. It's definitely hard to do um, cold turkey. Some people just do it. You know, you quit your job. You're like, hey, I'm, I'm going to do art. But I think my success happened because I was able to do it part time and literally like slowly inch my way into it um, by just losing hours at my job until I eventually just became full time artist. And what do you think was so like this isn't on there, but as you're talking, I'm like trying to trying to think as like an aspiring artist and what they would want to know. Um, oh. What do you what do you think is one of the main things you did that led you to be able to go part time and then and then full time? So like, was it like getting a lot of uh, past customers doing shows? Like, what do you think is the main thing that really kind of funded your full time art journey? Sure. Um, so for those that are listening, if you, by the way, I feel like I didn't talk much about my art. So besides painting okay. dogs, if you don't know what I do, um, so I mostly do custom pet portraits, but my art is kind of whimsical. It's vibrant. It's fun. Um, I don't, it's not, I mean, when I, when I paint animals, they look realistic, but they're not super realistic. Like they're not as realistic as yours, for example. So they are a little funky in a way. Um, and that's kind of like the niche that I have with doing that. And most of my income is through custom orders and pet portraits. And to be honest, when I started, I think having a diverse background of having a lot of seasonal temporary jobs, you know, um, in Gainesville, Florida, I worked at the university. My husband's a grad student. So I have a lot of friends um, that are students and kind of getting to know people that I really didn't have to do much marketing. Once I started doing a couple of festivals and shows and people were like, Oh my gosh, your stuff is just so unique and it's so cool. And I want a pet portrait. And, you know, especially in the beginning, I didn't know what to charge for my art and I was definitely undercharging people tell me sometimes <laughs> I still am. So I'm trying to figure that out, but because people could get affordable, really unique art, I just kind of started getting customers and most of my customers, at least 50% of them, I think are returning customers. And like every year for the holidays, they come back and order more for me. They order for birthdays. So I'm kind of the go-to for people that have ordered art for me because they love my stuff. So most of my success literally just came that even when I was doing it full time every week, I'd probably get a few orders literally just through like I more recently started doing more on Instagram but in the beginning I was really just pushing my art on Facebook yeah. and a lot of people just seeing stuff on my personal page and on my art page would reach out and it was mostly friends and through word of mouth and friends of friends and people that got my art as a gift that would start ordering for their friends so really Ooh. people don't realize how powerful you know word of mouth and just networking and connections are um, a lot of my bosses have ordered art and still do because I just had so many different different jobs and am involved, especially in the animal community. Um, a lot of people, you know, from the animal shelter, from the rescues, I do a lot of volunteer work with them and a lot of fundraising, which I'll touch on in a bit too. But really, I think a lot of it is because of my passion for animals and the work I do with them that a lot of people want to support me too. Yeah. So the, the rescue community here is like such a big thing. And that's kind of my target audience besides pet owners and animal people is people that are into charities because they're like, hey, this artist, you know, supports animal rescue. She supports adoption. She has similar interests as me. So I want to give her my money and people do it. And it's pretty yeah. awesome. That's amazing. That's so true. That's such a good niche to be in, too, because I have a friend here. She's going to be my maid of honor in my wedding. But she like she bought shoes just because like she mainly because they give a, a large profit to like help dogs in some way yeah. I forget what it is. but she's a huge dog lover and she's like I and then that was the first thing she said she's like I bought these shoes and they did this blah blah, blah. I was like is that the reason you bought it? she's like yeah that's basically the reason I bought yeah, these shoes like it makes <laughs> so you feel like, good yeah. you know you're yeah. like I, I want shoes but I, I'll give more money if the company yeah. does good things so it's like here just take my money so I feel like I've kind of really formed a good reputation um in the area too with being linked and involved with animal charities and people just love that so that's really helped my business a lot 
you have a niche. This is just yes. a perfect example of having a niche and how it can benefit you in so many ways. Awesome. I love it. Okay. Uh, what makes up your typical work day? How many hours do you spend painting? I wish I had a straightforward answer. Um, I am probably the worst example of like, oh, I want to be like her and be a professional artist. Honestly, I'm super disorganized and I, I will admit that I feel like my schedule's a mess. I'm definitely getting better, but my biggest <laughs> challenge since going full time has been making use of my time. You know, sometimes mm -hmm. I look back when I was part-time or even when I worked full-time at another job, and I feel like a lot of people listening would probably agree that the busier you are, the more you get done. And yeah. the more side jobs and side hustles and side gigs and projects I have going on at the same time, I tend to get more done. So my typical day, um, I'm a night owl, so I do wake up kind of late. I wake up, you know, I eat my breakfast. I feel like I dawdle a lot, and it's really hard for me to be my own boss. But once I sit down and work, um, it'll range from, like, a few hours of painting to maybe, like, an eight-hour painting day. But because yeah. I have so much, you know, as you can relate in anybody – who's really doing the art business thing, there's so many admin tasks involved. So I find that when I go on social media, you know, that's kind of a time suck and I'm really trying to get better. I'm trying to take a break right now because between um, all the volunteering, I manage social media for a lot of different animal groups in our area. So between managing all that, managing my art stuff, I feel like I'll lose a couple hours just getting caught up in that crap. And I'm trying to get better at not wasting my time with that. But then checking emails, you know, everyone that does social media, you have like Instagram, you have your website, then you have Facebook. Um, I recently made a YouTube. So I feel like I need to like check everything that's going on. And that engulfs several hours of my day. So I'm trying to cut down on admin time and try to push more time for painting because I, when I actually do get on a roll of painting, I'll wind up painting long into the night. And sometimes I don't go to bed till like four because yeah. I find that, yeah, <laughs> I know that we've like had this conversation and you posted stuff about that. You're more productive at night too. And yeah. it's, I feel like it's not the best habit, but I get way more done that way. So yeah. I just embraced it. I totally, and I totally understand everything you just said. Cause like, I, I, I mean, even today, like if I have to go on location and paint like for mm -hmm. a business, no problem. Like I'm up, I'm there, I'm there on time. I'm You're more diligent. Time. You know, you yeah. have your set rigid schedule. Exactly. But if it's like, I, if I have to do a canvas painting at home, I'll like, you know, hang out, eat breakfast at 11. <laughs> like, totally. Yeah. Yeah. And then like you, like, I feel like you do all the other things and you're like, well, there's nothing else to do. So I'll paint from 6 PM to, you know. 4 a.m. or something like that, or usually not that late, usually like maybe one or something. But yeah, I yeah, totally but if you're on understand. A roll, you know, you just yeah. got to keep going with it because you're like, well, I didn't get started till now, so I have to keep up with what I'm doing. So yeah. exactly. And if you have a good podcast or music or anything like that, it's like, okay, I can do this. Yeah, it's uh, or Netflix. So just yes. keep going through the night. It works. It works. Exactly. It's just good to know you're not alone too. Cause I think a lot of artists are like that. It's just hard. Yeah. Um, can you talk us through your painting process? Are there any methods or techniques that you picked up? Sure. So I work primarily with acrylics. Um, I yeah. like them because I'm impatient. They dry quickly. When I make a mistake, I can just go over it. I, um, if any of you guys have seen my art, um, most of my custom work, a lot of people, especially right now for the holidays, like I do ornaments and I do a lot of canvas work, but my favorite thing to do is paint on repurposed materials. So oh. I paint on old unused junk that people don't want. And my favorite canvas per se is actually old fan blades. I know that's really oh. random, but that's kind of been like part of my niche too. And People love it. I've literally become known in Gainesville as like the artist that paints on fan blades. And I have people that I don't even know reach out to me all the time. And they're like, I have fan blades from my old fan. I just replaced it. So they're for you. So I literally have hundreds of them in my garage and I love to paint on them. It's kind of like a unique shaped piece of wood. Mm. And it makes really cool wall art. So I like to paint on those. I paint on old hubcaps. I really do like painting on wood just in general, like right here. I just have one in front of me. This is not finished, so don't judge, but it's just a start. I started it like right before I think is a pet portrait on wood. So oh, yeah. this is just like a nice piece of wood. And I like to use the background um, as 
kind of just a Ooh. nice neutral thing because I do paint in really crazy colors. So some people I feel like like the whole trendy look of wood. So using wood and when, when I use pieces of wood, I don't like go to the store and buy brand new wood. I primarily want to keep stuff out of landfills. So mm -hmm. I mean, I will literally like there's like a, a bunch of floorboards I got in my neighborhood recently out of someone's trash because they were really beautiful wood and they were throwing them away. And they definitely <laughs> saw me taking them too. So I kind of like shove them in my car and run. <laughs> but I do crazy <laughs> shit like that because I'm like, you know, this stuff's going to go in the garbage and in a landfill and I care about the planet so I feel like besides just making art I kind of want my purpose of what I'm doing to really make a difference on the planet since my career path changed so many times that's initially what I wanted to do you know is work with animals and the environment and stuff so I try to give back and do that with my art so that's definitely like my favorite thing to paint on and that's kind of my my thing I guess repurpose junk wood I love it though you seem so clear on your on your on what you're about and when your goals and stuff like that I love that it, 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 it took a while through. to get there so <laughs> really but yeah, yeah like how did you start doing that did you just like start you know listening to yourself because I'm st I'm like recently going through that I'm like okay what do I actually like to do like you know yeah I mean the biggest thing and the biggest advice I give to other artists too is you know when you decide you want to be a professional artist and you think, hey, how am I going to sell my art? How am I going to make people want to buy it? The first thing you think of is you think, okay, what's trendy? What do people want? What are they asking for? And you know what? You do that enough and realize it doesn't really make a difference. But what people really want when they buy art is they want to see your heart and your passion explode in what you're doing. And it took me a long time to figure that out that I'm like, you know what? Like, I'm just going to paint on junk. And I started doing that and I realized that the reaction I was getting in the beginning, I didn't sell a lot of my fan blades, but the reactions I got like at art shows and just on social media were amazing. And I'm like, you know what, this is getting attention and this is how I'm getting known. So I'm just going to push and I'm going to do it. I just yeah. kept painting more and I have sold a lot of them. I've had people request pet portraits on fan blades. It's kind of become a thing. Um, and just in general with when I'm not painting co commissioned work for people and painting pet portraits, if I paint random animals, I paint a lot of monarchs. If I paint random stuff, I paint it because I want to do it. And it honestly took me years to figure out that that's, honestly the way to become a successful artist it's not going to happen overnight but if you yeah. want your art to be truly yours and not just you know copying what you see other people doing or trying to do what you think people want to buy mm -hmm. that is how you will become successful and like i'm sure a lot of you guys realize and if you haven't yet you will realize success as an artist does not just mean money yeah. And it also doesn't just mean exposure because don't we hear that <laughs> enough and we're sick of that but it's really just getting you know, your stuff out there, making an impact, making people happy or whatever reaction you're looking for. If it's not happiness, when people look at your art, just getting a reaction and getting your stuff recognized, you know, that if people see it somewhere, they're going to say, oh my gosh, I know that artist. Um, I had my art recently, I've had my art featured at a lot of places around town, but recently it was at um, a pizza place called Satchel's Pizza here. And it actually fit in perfect because their entire um, decor is all repurposed junk and they have the same similar mission. So I actually reached out to them because I know they do a different art installation. They feature another artist, um, every single month. So I reached out and like, you have to reach out like a year in advance because they have like a major booking system for artists that want to show art there. So they were really excited to have my art and my art wound up selling more than they said any other artist ever has there. So it was awesome. And I literally, people that I didn't know come find me at art shows and say, I wanted to meet the artist in person because I saw your work at Satchel's. And that's a really crazy feeling to be like, I started just painting people's garbage and now I'm known for that. <laughs> So yeah. honestly, like if you're listening to this, I hope it <laughs> inspires somebody that's listening that like you need to follow your heart and do your thing. And I promise it'll pay off. I promise it will. I love it. I love everything about what you just said. Even, I mean, even from down, down to your blue hair, you're like, this is what I want. Because <laughs> yeah. like, cause like I, my hair was like all purple but before, like I found all the colors. So I love Yeah, I know you've had crazy it. hair too. It's, it's an yes. artist thing, you know, you gotta like just express yourself. You gotta be you, like we don't care. And if you're an artist listening and you care what people think, you gotta like change that. You know, you just, you just can't, you can't. 
Yeah, because I tell the story all the time. Like, I started to do, like, realistic animals because I thought that's what people wanted, where I really wanted yeah. to do ra rainbow animals. And then so a couple of years ago, I finally just started doing rainbow animals, and people loved it still. And I was like, exactly. okay. Like, I was just so – yeah. I think a lot of artists, too, they're scared people won't take them seriously with the colored hair or with the – crazy style or if it's not realistic people are like well i want to be taken seriously or i want people to you know like buy things from me and it's like they will anyway you know yeah and it's just i think you're a great example of that too yeah it's like it's something working of, yeah something about that i'll actually mention i'll kind of be really open on this um because it mm -hmm. actually just made me think i was like talking to my husband about this the other day that i definitely do get self-conscious with my art sometimes um i mean not my hair i don't care about that kind of stuff but yeah i mean i have people at art shows especially sometimes older people they come up and they will be critical because you know my animals are not mm -hmm. fully realistic i do have a crazy whether you want to call it whimsical just like you know vibrant whatever my, my stuff is not like a photograph and like my reasoning i try to explain to people is hey like there's different types of artists. Everyone has their own style. For me, if I want something to look like exactly like that animal or like a dog, that's what a photograph is for. Yeah. And art <laughs> is a form to express it in a different way. And I've found that I've come, become really self-conscious because of some comments I've gotten from some people, like whether they say like, oh, those animals' eyes are too close together or like that, <laughs> those proportions are off or that animal's not really that bright color. You know, people always have something to criticize, of course. Super like their shit. Yeah, of course. <laughs> So, so annoying. So I've definitely like become really discouraged. And I find that sometimes when I get in these weird modes of having low self-esteem, I'll like talk to customers that ask about my art. And I try to like overcompensate by saying like, you know, I know my art isn't realistic, but like, this is my own style. And then people are always like, yeah, but that's what I like about it. Like, that's what I wanted. So I kind of have to snap <laughs> myself back into it, but I definitely fall into that. And I think everyone that's listening probably does, you know, as an artist, a lot of us are you know, just as creative souls, I feel like a lot of us have that sensitivity for our stuff because your art isn't just your work, it's your passion, you know, and it is a part of your soul. So it's hard not to take it personally when you get criticism, yeah. even if it's helpful. So I go through the same thing. And as much as I try to rock it and like feel confident in my own skin, um, I definitely do, you know, get offensive to things, but I've just learned to, to shrug it off because for every you know, nasty comment I get, I get like a hundred nice ones. So just remember that if anybody ever puts your art down, remember that's what makes it you. So yeah, for sure. I love that you said that everything about it too. <laughs> just all the things you sound so professional and just in, and just insightful. I love this whole conversation. Thank you. Uh, yeah. Like I don't know. I totally get it too. Like I just did a pink lion and some people love it. Like girls, especially girls love it, but you have yeah. like usually older people, older men that are like, I don't get it. Like that. And when like they have something kids. to say, you just say, well, yeah. nobody's asking you to buy it. Yeah. Nobody's asking yeah. you to even look at it. Like, yeah. fine. Like, go away then you know exactly Bye. yeah my honest first reaction when someone is like that's kind of strange or that's not how it's supposed to be I automatically think their mind isn't just open like their their exactly. mind is really closed and I'm like oh that's yeah. kind of I kind of like judge them in a way I'm like man you should really like open up your mind and like yeah, well, I mean, they, they judged you first you can judge them yeah. you know oh, true. It's, it's hard true. not to <laughs> <True>. <laughs> Awesome. But I've also noticed it's mostly older people too. Oh yeah. <laughs> They're Definitely. like very set in their ways. And if someone's older and listening, I'm sorry, you're probably not like that. But in general, I've noticed it's like grandparents or parents. Like it's like yeah, going kind of set in their ways. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Um, let's see. What is the thing you don't like to paint without? Um, so that's actually a good thing. And I brought them here so I can show them. So I just got yeah. these little tiny paint brushes on Amazon. I don't know if you can see them. They have like a little like plastic thing. So I'm yeah. obsessed with tiny brushes because one, I feel like I just like destroy them, especially I get really lazy and I leave my um, brushes in my water for like months at a time and they get really gross. So I feel like for smaller brushes and things, it definitely damages them. But I, especially painting animals, and when I do try to put more of a realistic spin on them, um, you kind of need to get in there for the nitty gritty details with like fur and whiskers and stuff like that. So I'm sure you go through the same thing that literally <laughs> tiny brushes are my favorite. So I mean, these are pretty cheap on Amazon. It was like 10 bucks and I got a big set of a ton of them. So I was really excited. I'm like, I'm going to treat myself $10 new brushes. I can afford that. Um, but that's my favorite thing. And I try to take better care of them now, but I find that when I paint 
with smaller detail brushes rather than just using a big brush. That really makes a difference in the quality of my art um, and, you know, yeah. the outcome of how realistic an animal might look. Yeah, definitely. I actually, I hate using the small brushes because it takes so much time. I'm like, I just would rather get a big yeah. brush in there. But yeah, for sure. For I little totally paintings, it's saying. better. Yeah, so I'll oh, bring yeah, up yeah. too. Um, so recently, I actually, I had my first batch this week. I just started working for Chewy. If you guys are familiar with Chewy.com. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, and I'm kind of like not really so cool. supposed to talk about it because I'm like, a, I mean, like they're, they're probably not listening, right? I hope they're not here. But, you know, I'm like a contractor. <laughs> so I'm like a secret, like, artist that does commissioned work for them that they send to their customers. So part of the reason, too, I got these brushes is because their requirements for paintings are six by six canvas, um, which oh. is like small ish. I mean, I've worked on smaller mm -hmm. canvases, but I find that for their requirements, I also kind of have to change my style a bit because they do have to be more realistic for their requirements. And you're not allowed to use unnatural colors in the animals, which is Ew. one thing. <laughs> yeah, there's definitely rules, but if anything, I'm kind of using it as an experience to kind of like, yeah. you know, um, teach myself to like, I almost look at it like, oh, I'm going to pretend I'm taking an art class and I'm forced to follow these rules. So it kind of helps me work on painting more realistic style animals for them but the brushes especially are good for smaller works so like you said for bigger paintings it is a pain to use a tiny um, paintbrush but for anybody out there who does smaller works and you find that you can't get the best details I definitely recommend getting really tiny detail um, brushes for that so for sure for sure um so that's kind of you saying that you wanted to work on realistic animals um so I was going to ask you what you thought about this. So, like, in the Artist Academy Advance, we do a bunch of, like, business techniques. I could talk about art business for, like, days. Um, yes. A couple, a couple of the members have asked if we could do, like, paintings, like, to teach how to how to do, how like, to paint. yeah, like, how to paint more. Do you, would you like that? Is there a certain thing that you would want to learn, like, realistic animals, maybe? Or Yeah, I mean, I think I would benefit from that, um, for okay. sure, because, obviously, realism and, like, like real detailed realism is not my thing. So, I mean, I, yeah. as much as I've been painting pretty much my whole life, I obviously have so much to learn about realism um, and, like, you know, how to paint. I remember a while ago you did, like, a tutorial, I think, of, like, a tiger's eye or a lion's eye. And, like, yeah. kind of going back to that, um, I think I can benefit more from really learning to make things look realistic. Like, for example, I'll just grab a painting because I just have a pile here. This one's not fully done. I still have to add some details. But this is, like, a little <laughs> dog when I did. And, like, Here's my eyes. You know, I just paint the eyes oh, with yeah. a little dot. So, like, here's a little character. But, like, does this look like a photograph? Absolutely not. So I clearly, um, even as a professional artist, I have a lot to learn on how to make a realistic eye. So, yeah. Yes, but I would that's, benefit. That's adorable. <laughs> that, <laughs> that little dog. Even though even though it's not realistic, it's I love that, like, like just animated kind of stuff. Uh, we just we're doing some murals for that today, and it's fun to just just to switch, you know, be like, okay, let's try this, yes. now let's try that. But yeah, okay, yeah, some more more realistic stuff. Okay, um, uh, let's see. Are there any art lessons you've learned the hard way? Um, probably. This is a good question, and I knew I was going to be asked it, but I don't remember if I <laughs> prepared um, anything for it. I guess just, like, not really specific artistic skills, but even when I just do crafty things, I feel like sometimes I can be stubborn and I learn things the hard way. Like, for example, I actually will show one here. I just have all these things around me. Um, so one of the things I do for the holidays is I paint, like, pet portraits on ornaments. So here's one that's, like, a couple of golden <laughs> doodles. And oh this God. person <laughs> wanted, like, it's hard to see, but they wanted, like, glitter inside and I'm just like oh that'll be easy you know I'll just like put some Mod Podge and some glitter in there and like roll it around I was supposed to ship this out last week and the inside still isn't dry so I basically was trying like it's kind of like scratching on the side um so basically it I learned things by I think being stubborn and being like oh I know how this would work um and then it doesn't and I yeah. do it on people's orders so then I'm on a time crunch and I think in general, I don't really have a specific answer to that, but I think I just tend to like wing it, which sometimes is awesome. And there's a really good result out of it, but a lot of times it doesn't. And then I'm just under more pressure, especially around <laughs> this time of the year, crazy with orders. Um, but yeah, I think I just can be stubborn. And instead of taking the time to like research how to do something right or look at how other people do it, I just kind of make things up along the way. 
Yeah, so. I, we are so alike in that. Yes. In that. Like, artist so, brain. It must just be the way artists are programmed, I swear. <laughs> exactly. Like, for example, like I painted a, a fountain and I was like, I'll just use like the uh, normal exterior mural paint, blah, blah, blah. And then we did yeah. it and it like it bubbled up with foam. And oh. I was like, wait a second, what? And so I asked the paint store, I'm like, was I not supposed to use this? They're like, no, that paint has like soap in it you're supposed to use pool paint i was like well i just went with it so oh yeah it, it ended up being fine but yeah, it ended up to, working but yeah like i feel that. like outdoor services um surfaces are it's like the same thing when you when you want to make sure it's not going to get damaged too and a client pays you it's sometimes <laughs> like i've kind of experimented and usually things are good but same thing i'll like spray an exterior thing and be like it says exterior hope it works you know <laughs> yeah so exactly gotta go with it. <laughs> Definitely. Um, do you have a favorite uh, past project or painting? Um, let me see. I feel just in general, um, I, I guess like you can kind of see in the background. It's like it's like back there. There's like a sorry, it's hard to point to it, but that painting's actually yeah. really huge. It's like on that wall. But I've done a lot of mixed media stuff by creating like dimensional butterflies. So one thing I have a lot of fun with um, besides doing the pet portraits is like I can kind of just like relax a bit and be under less pressure when I paint like monarchs so I paint butterflies they're not realistic you know they're just super like whimsy and fun and like loose and I'll make them dimensional on the canvas and put unnatural colors in them and that's kind of my fun go-to project and I kind of just as you can kind of see it's hard because it's far away but I kind of just like throw a lot of paint on there as well in different colors and just like see what the outcome is without having a plan and I yeah. think that I really enjoy um doing stuff like that in addition to the repurposed materials. Um, I just, my garage is literally filled with all kinds of random things. Like I have an old door that somebody gave me that I want to paint, like not to actually put on hinges, but just to be a piece of art. So I really enjoy and also look forward to future projects of just random things that are not commissioned, not for a customer, but that I can just kind of, you know, let loose and not feel so under pressure, I guess, to like stay between the lines and just kind of go crazy with it. Yeah, definitely. I, I would love to know, or I'd love to see what you create too, when you can really just like let go and do it. You know, that's always exactly. when an artist just like they shine a little bit more. Definitely. <laughs> what are your future art plans and goals? What are you working on right now? A lot of holiday stuff. Yeah. So I literally, so I am so overwhelmed. I feel like a lot of people are probably in this boat or wanting to get there. A couple of weeks ago, I wanted to get here and now I'm almost regretting it because I, you know, I, I've been pushing for so long on social media and on my own page. Cause I know a lot of my friends and people I know like on Facebook and stuff, I knew they were going to order stuff. So literally like back in October, even in September, I'm like, Hey, if you're going to order stuff, please order now. I even had some people order in August. I had someone order like 11, cat ornaments of all of her cats in August. She actually ordered like a year ago, but I finished them in August to get them out of the way. And I've been telling everyone like, Hey, it's cheaper. I'm giving you a discount. You know, if you pre-order, everyone waits until now. So literally this week, especially cause I just had a couple art shows recently and mm -hmm. I do okay at art shows, but most of my income is through custom orders. So then I just get like this flow of orders like the next day or the next week. So I made the mistake of saying, okay, I want to give these people time to order. I'm going to give you guys till the end of this week. So I think that's like the 24th. I set the date for Sunday. So I actually sound professional and have a concrete order. I think today alone, I got at least 20 orders and like, <laughs> they're not just ornaments, but like, some of them are big canvases and I'm like, I am going to die. I'm going to die. So I am like in a good way, um, really overwhelmed. So I keep a spreadsheet. I try to be really organized and keep track of my orders. And I think I have like at least 60 clients of orders that I need to like do in the next like few weeks. And some of them ordered like multiple things. Like some of them are like, you know, I want six ornaments and I want this and that. So I'm very overwhelmed. So as far as looking into the future, that's kind of as far as I want to see right now. Yeah. <laughs> um, but it's a, it's a good problem to have. I don't want to sound in any way like I'm complaining, but I think most of you guys um, listening can relate that it def definitely becomes stressful. So at this time of year, I'm very fortunate that I get to do this full time. So I have all my time to finish up these orders and I can literally lock myself in my art studio and be a hermit and, you know, have the excuse to not be social be like, Hey guys, I have to do my work. Here's yeah. I need to do. So I'm kind of at that point and I do have some upcoming projects that are not, 
um, for the holidays. So they'll probably be my near future ones. Like I have a client of mine that I painted a mural on her fence. Um, and I did it over the summer. I painted, I painted like these big poppy flowers. It was just like really loose and fun. And she wants all of her dogs. She wants six dogs painted huge on the fence. So I'm like, can we wait till after the holidays? And she's like, yeah, yeah, sure. <laughs> Um, and those of you guys that do follow me on social media might have seen the door that I painted recently at a local pet store. Um, I'm also going to be painting a business sign for them to put out front, but they're not on a deadline either. So that's going to be something probably after the holidays. So I do have like other commissions of bigger projects, but if they're not gifts, people are pretty great with, you know, flexible with the timing. They know, especially if they know me, they know how crazy things get for me this time of year. So Oh, good. Yeah. That's just it's such a weight lifted, too. When you can be like, can you wait? And they're like, yeah, it's like, oh, gosh, thank you. But yeah, it yes. is kind of like a it's just oh, what what's the term for it? But it's just like you you want you want to be busy so bad. And then you are. And it's like, oh, man, this, <laughs> like, you got what you wish for. Right. How great. Is yes. That? Put it out there to the universe and you get it. And you're like, I wish for this. Okay, it's fine. It's fine. But yeah, yeah just taking one day at a time. <laughs> it's, it's rough. I mean, I think for me, though, like I work well under pressure. I do tend to procrastinate. Yeah. So there's yeah. a story you told, I think, on one of your pod. I don't remember which time, but you told a story about like a client. You were talking about deadlines and you talked about a client that you just kept like pushing off his order. Do you remember yeah. that? So yeah. I resonated with that so hard because I'm like, oh, my gosh, that's every one of my orders. <laughs> because when people order not around the holidays, if it's just for them, they're like, oh, I don't have a deadline. I'm like, are you sure? You know, it might take up to eight weeks if you don't have a deadline. They're like, nah, nah, it's cool. Dude, it'll take me like three, four months because I just keep pushing it off when I get more orders with deadlines. And if I'm not under pressure, you know, I'll just not get much done. So, so I think in general, a lot of people probably can agree that it's sometimes you have to kick yourself in the butt and be like, Hey, I actually, you know, I have to have these done before Christmas. I have like what, like four five weeks now. And like, I have to do it, whether I'm going to not sleep, whether I'm just going to not eat anymore or not do anything like I, whatever <laughs> I have to do, I will get them done. And I do. And like, we truly amaze ourselves. And when we're, when we're under pressure, what we can push ourselves to do. So in that case, it's very high stress, but I think I'm fortunate because that's what really makes me the most productive. Yeah. I definitely, definitely agree. We are very similar. Every day, yes. the more you keep talking, I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm so like the same talk. person. <laughs> exactly. We're like the same. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. No, yeah, no, I totally agree. There's like this uh, greetings from Springfield mural. It's super big, but there's no deadline on it. So all summer long when I was swamped, I was like, oh, I'll do that later. I'll do it later. Now it's almost winter, especially in Missouri. It's like, we're lucky to get a 50 degree day. So, like, so it's like, oh, we'll wait till next summer to do it. <laughs> no, no, I'm point. like, no, I have not put it off. In, it's <laughs> been like it's been like a year going like that we finally well, got permi permissions for it and yeah stuff. And yeah so yeah I'm literally finishing it this weekend but I've been working on oh, and that's off great. for months yeah good good yeah I feel like, like once doing you, it on the weekend once you kind of get it started too mm -hmm. it, it helps you know once, yeah. once the idea is there it, it helps initiate it just starting sometimes most of you listeners probably agree like it's kind of just picking up the paintbrush putting the first bit of paint down on anything is the hardest. And once you do, it just kind of flows from there. Your ideas yeah. come out. So for sure. Um, let's see, we are at the last question that um, I think you kind of already answered this a little bit. If you want to talk maybe a little bit more about it. Um, is there sure. any advice you would give artists who want to make art a full time career, but don't know where to start? Yeah, so my advice, unless you know, like whether like unless you have like a contract, or you have something set where you're like, I know, I'm gonna have this steady income. Um, I, if you, at least if you're a bit of a planner, I wouldn't advise just like leaving your job and going into advice transitioning. So if you're lucky enough that you have a job where either maybe you can cut back on hours or go to part-time, maybe you already are part-time, kind of evaluate really strategically, like how much time do you spend on your art? How much income do you make? If you had more time for art and you weren't doing your other job, could you replace that income or at least replace enough of it? Um, really good advice that someone gave me, actually not art related at all, but just in general about picking a job you like and not worrying so much about the money is really the secret to being rich is not about making a lot of money, but it's about cutting down your expenses and living mm -hmm. like frugally if you can. So for example, if there's any, I mean, obviously you have your bills, you know, you have your rent or your mortgage, things you need to pay. I get that. I have it too. I have to, you know, pay for my house or my car, all these things. But 
I don't really spend much money. I mean, like, honestly, I do most of my shopping at thrift stores. Not everyone is all about that, but I am. I save tons of money because I rarely buy new. Most of my art supplies, because they are repurposed, I save a lot of money on art supplies. I literally take stuff out of the garbage and I paint it and then I sell it and I make money off of it. So <laughs> there's a lot of ways around it. Um, and I get that's not feasible for everybody. But if you kind of look at your lifestyle and you're like, hey, I want to start making art. I want to be an artist. So that means I'm going to make less income at a regular 40 hour a week job with a steady paycheck. Don't just look at how much less money you'll be making, but, but look at where you can cut your expenses. And you'd be surprised at how much happier you are. I think the biggest thing with success is everyone is so focused on, you know, I think that sense of pride of being able to say like, oh, I have this big fancy job and like, you know, I make all this money and all this stuff. But like, is that what makes anybody happy? Not really. Most of those oh. people that feel the need to say that say it because they're not happy in other areas of their lives. And I found that since becoming an artist, like my soul is happy. And sometimes it's discouraging when other people, you know, our age talk about they're like, they're a doctor or they're this. And I'm just like, well, I make like a very small percentage of what you make, but it, it works for me and my family. And yeah. we've, you know, we've made it work. So that's my advice is don't compare yourself to other people. Don't compare yourself to other jobs. Like, especially in this day and age, like there's nothing like that's conventional anymore. I feel like the normal nine to five is not, it doesn't have to be a thing. You know, people, so many people work for themselves. So many people start their own businesses. It's easier than it's ever been with social media, with online, with so many resources available and technology. Like you can literally start your art business at such a low cost and not have to pay for marketing or pay for these things. I mean, Artist Academy, honestly, has helped me so much because when Lissa first kind of got me to join, um, you know, I was already a full time artist. I already was making enough income, making it work. But a lot of what I've learned from you has been just taking it the next step and kind of forcing myself to do these things. I've always said like, you know, starting an email list or figuring out what my target audience is through like doing surveys and like kind of um, finding out for sure that the people I thought were going to buy my art are really the main people that do because they, their interests align with mine. So I realized what I was doing was working and I guess just kind of, you know, going with that, but actually having a bit of a business model along with it too. So my advice as well, anybody that's listening, like if you guys have been on the fence, maybe about joining the um, Artist Academy Advanced oh. when it reopens, I'm not trying to, Andrew did not ask oh. me to say this, I promise. But it honestly <laughs> helped me. I was kind of on the fence because I'm like, you know, do I need to spend a little bit more money each month for things that I already know? But it's actually mm. kept me <laughs> diligent. It's like having, you know, a business plan and you have homework each week. It's really easy. It doesn't take long, but it's just keeping you on track to grow growing your art and having so many resources to do it. So I think having someone like you kind of checking up on us to just be like, you know, how are you guys coming along? So just as an example, I thought I was like an established artist and I'm like, I don't know what tips, you know, I might be able to utilize. I, I've really utilized a lot. But one thing, for example, is I never even knew about live painting. You know, I didn't even know what it was. A lot of you guys listening might not know. Um, but I got myself booked at a local animal sanctuary. So along with helping animals, yes. I'm also, I'm also <laughs> vegan and I'm just all about like helping all species of animals. So besides animal shelters and pets, I have done a ton of fundraising for local sanctuaries and farms in my area that like rescue animals. So they're going to be having a big holiday event and a fundraiser and I'm going to do live painting. We didn't decide on which animal I'm going to paint yet, but they're going to do a little promo on their social media. Um, of picking a few because they have a photographer that takes really good pictures and they're going to put some of their favorite pictures up, have everybody pick their favorite and then I'm going to paint it and then I'm going to auction it off to raise money for them afterwards. So it's more for exposure. It's not for me to make money and I don't really care because I just love doing anything that helps animals and yeah. just getting out there and talking to people. But that's the type of thing that even though I kind of formed the connection on my own, I would have never even thought about offering live painting you know, if it yeah. wasn't for you. So there's just a uh, lot of different little steps that I've gained that I, I realize that without, you know, this group and also the sense of community, you know, a lot of you guys listening, like look at all you guys commenting on this, so excited about hearing, you know, like-minded, a like-minded artist, like talk and like share my story. You guys are listening to me and that's amazing. Like the sense of community here that we can lift each other up and everyone doesn't have to feel like, oh, I'm an artist, you're an artist. So like we're, we're each other's competition, right? Like, no, that's not the case at all. And there's a lot of people in art shows or if you go to different events that are very like stingy and like they don't want to share anything or really like want to talk to you. 
but I have been collaborating with local artists where we help each other out. I have an artist that works with wood and she's been giving me a ton of wood to use for my art because we both use repurposed wood. And, you know, I have other artists that I do trades with. We trade like art for each other. I trade art for services from other local businesses. And I just realized that having the support in our community for local people, for artists and not be so judgy, you know, that's mm -hmm. something I've really found just feels really warm in the group of being able to come in and give each other advice and not feel like, oh, I don't want to help anybody because like, I just want to be successful type thing. Like there is not a sense of that in Artist Academy or Artist Academy Advance and, you know, other Facebook groups that you find are like that or just people in general are like that. So I think mm -hmm. I've really um, appreciated the, the sense of friendship that comes out of it and support. Uh, thank you for saying all that. Yeah. I didn't, I'm not paying her, guys. This is great. No, though. but I just wanted to go off because that's like I wrote just some notes down of things I wanted to touch on. And like, that's just something that's been a big impact for me um, in growth, uh -huh. you know, because without it, I would just kind of be doing the things I'm already doing, which is great. I've been finding opportunities, but sometimes having um, the people in your life, even people you've never met, like you, <laughs> that you can just talk to, get advice, ask questions, you know, that's what it's all about. Like, any of you guys listening, like, feel free to like follow my stuff, comment, message me. Like if you ever have questions too, just not that I'm like an expert at this, but if you just like want to chat art, get ideas, collaborate, anything like trade, like I'm so all about that stuff. So, you know, yeah. I think having the sense to realize we're all real people and even those of us that do it as a professional, I think it's just, it's a really cool vibe. It's nice to have that sense of support. Awesome. I love that you love it too. Cause I remember, I remember like the first um, message that we like sent to each other. You you said something about um, how you you're usually kind of stubborn and you you like to do it alone. So you're like I don't know, but you're like but maybe I should because L Lissa wanted you to get in. I'm you you've really just like been a big contributor to the Facebook group and everything. And you're like yeah, anytime I give you an idea and you're like yeah, I'm gonna do that and you do it and you go out and do it. And I'm like I know, yeah, I, I, I otherwise I wouldn't have. Yeah, exactly. And I can see like who's successful and who maybe isn't. It's the people who like just like get an idea and they act on it and they're like, yeah, I'm just going to do sure. this. And you do that. Um, I was going to, I was going to actually ask you what you liked about it, uh, what you liked about the Arts Academy and what you want to see more of, uh, whether it's painting techniques or do you like, so you like the, uh, every week you get like a task. Is that, I just kind of want to talk about it for a sec. I li I'd like to get yeah. feedback from you guys. And because sure. like going into the first of the year, I want to adjust it as needed and see what you guys like, what you don't like. I just don't want to also overwhelm you with a task every single week. I was going to see if that's too much um, or what you thought just in general. Sure. So, so this time of year, I'll be honest that I've <laughs> definitely been slowing down. I haven't been participating as much and like really checking in on the assignments in mm -hmm. the beginning. Like, I think it was like maybe August or September when I joined, I don't remember now, but like yeah. when I first started, I was very active. You know, I printed out all the worksheets. I did everything. I did my homework, <laughs> homework. It, it really is yeah. a lot of work because I get overwhelmed yeah. with a lot, but it helps oh, motivate good. me and keep me on track. A lot of it, I felt excited if I'm like, wow, you know, we have to do a website. I already have a website, but it helps me kind of make it look better because we were all sharing each other's websites for support. Um, yeah. So I definitely love that. But this time of year, just because I'm kind of like in my own zone right now, I've kind of stepped back a little bit and haven't been able to keep up. But besides, yeah. I guess these crazy months, typically that is the type of format I personally benefit from because okay. kind of like we discussed, like what our typical day would look like. I don't really have a lot of structure in my day and it's hard for me to form that for myself. So if I'm kind of forced to focus on something different each week, then that does really help with my growth significantly. And I think that any artist that's trying to grow simple things or even just learning to do a giveaway. I mean, I, so many things, I didn't even mention like the canvas prints. I always have done just like small, like either photo prints or paper prints just in um, frames. Cause I try to do what's the most cost effective and cheap for me to make and then resell at shows. But having the confidence to be like, all right, you know, canvas prints are effective. Like you spend a lot more money to make them up front, but you can charge a lot more money. And that's something that I learned from the whole like print perfect tutorial and everything you offered. Okay. And like, these are things that I, I was following along and literally doing everything. And now that I've built on so much of it, I feel like it's just all mushed together that I don't even, you know, it, it's easy to forget really how much I've been keeping up with and doing in the group, like learning how to photograph your art, 
you know, as an artist, like a lot of you guys are going to start and think like, how do I make a canvas print? Like, how am I going (laughs) to copy that? No, like you take a photo of it and it's pretty easy to do. Um, I'm trying to think what else, but just like with the website, um, doing the email list, doing giveaways, I've been doing more giveaways. So a lot of it is I took your inspiration and I might've tweaked it, but it was kind of the motivation of like, everyone in the group is doing this at the same time. Like we all have to do a giveaway, you know, give away a print. So it was kind of like, not competition because we weren't competing with each other, but the competition to keep up with the group per se, because everyone else okay. is doing it. And the support okay. of all of us in the group being able to see everyone else's posts for it and stuff. So I really, really benefited from that, especially because, you know, I'm on Instagram. I don't, I want to get more followers and I struggle because I'm so busy trying to make my art. I'm like, I don't have time to like figure out how to do that. So just these little things um, I don't know, like it's helped my growth a bit on social media, but like even just you telling me what TikTok is, I'm like, what the hell is TikTok? Like, what are the kids <laughs> using these days? I have no idea what that is, but like I've done it. I honestly don't keep up with it, but yeah. I started it and that was just kind of another new thing to try. And all of this I learned through just our discussions in the group. Yeah. Amazing. Okay, good. So I was thinking, I was thinking maybe like, would it be, So, like, I give you guys a task every week, right, to do something. And I was thinking about maybe doing, like, one month, have the tasks be oriented towards, like, maybe painting a certain thing. Or, Mm -hmm. and then one month have it to be, like, hey, we're all going to do this again, like, a giveaway. Or we're all going to email our list because everybody kind of forgets to email them, like, especially after Christmas. Um, Sure. No, I like that. I think the structure is good because the thing is like, it's encouraging, especially when you offer like a prize, you know, for those that participate. I mean, that's not why I did it, but it's a nice incentive, but it also gives people the option that you don't have to, you know, there's a lot of people in the group that aren't participating because they're busy with their own stuff. You get caught up in life. Like I totally get it. Um, yeah. so there's definitely some things that I haven't participated in, but I've tried to do them all, but I think keeping up with that structure and having us all do it together, just the okay. fact that someone can comment in the group and say, I have a question, you know, how do you do this? Or where did you guys buy this? Or like, what supplies do you recommend? You know, it's been so helpful. Like just from you and Lisa, I recently bought, you know, a ring light. I didn't even know what a ring light was and I yeah. used that for my art. And that's just because of a conversation we had about, you know, making prints. So really that's the kind of stuff that a lot of artists don't think about. And when you think about, you know, how do I start a business? It's so overwhelming. Just the fact that even just like, like legitimizing your business is stressful enough and just figuring out how to do that. But then once you actually start, there's so many little gears involved that like once you get the hang of it it seems like second nature but I have people talk to me all the time just in general that like are still hobby artists trying to figure out and like I realize when they act impressed with the stuff I'm doing I'm like holy shit like I'm actually doing stuff you know because it just (laughs) I don't I lose track of time and don't really realize how much I'm doing yeah so I think that the benefit builds and really is incredible like all together so Good. I'm so glad to hear all this feedback too. Uh, thank you so much for coming on here and talking to me and giving me feedback and just really, I feel like we are so alike. I knew, I know yes. I that a, a lot, but we are like just the same things that the troubles you're having are still the troubles I'm having too. And the only difference between me and you is I've just been doing it a little bit longer and that's it. And that's like, and that's why I'm sharing with you guys like, Hey, I've learned to do this and you guys are doing it and you guys are doing amazing. And I'm so happy to hear that you are so incredibly busy. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah, this holiday season is definitely going to pay off. But yep, I think that's it. I know we talked for about an hour, so it's so nice to like meet you. Uh, definitely, and, yeah. That's All right, great. Well, we should do this again sometime. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I'm down. Thank you so much to everybody listening. I mean, I saw the numbers going up and down, but I'm like, oh my gosh, people are actually listening to that. People want to hear what I have to say. So thank you for being here, guys. That's awesome, and you know, yeah. supporting me and Andrea and everything. It's just, it's been great to be involved with everything. So thank you. No problem. And you, one last thing, I always forget to tell people to do this, but can you tell us your website and if people are listening on the podcast, can you tell us your Instagram and just where to find you to Yeah. So I guess this is kind of new. I've never done an Instagram live. So like, if you guys are watching, like, can you see like my art? Because I think it says like our names at the top. So like Sam Weeman Art is my art name, but like to know how to spell that, you know, it's it's up at the top. So it's (laughs) S-A-M-M-W-E-H-M-A-N-A-R-T um that's my same name on um facebook it's my website if you just do samweemanart.com um i have a youtube channel now which like someone encouraged me to do that because i do time (laughs) lapses of all my custom Mm. orders so i post them on there and i don't get a i don't get a ton of views but i like give it to customers so 
everywhere I'm on social media or something, it's just Sam Weeman art. Um, but yeah, um, feel free to check out my website. If you guys have suggestions, feedback, or even if you just feel inspired by like something I've done or posted, please let me know because that like really makes me excited to hear. I love positive feedback. And I mean, if you guys are an artist and you follow me on social, on social media, I'll follow you back. So, you know, follow for follow. We can support each other. Um, that's always great too. So awesome. I love it. All right. Well, thank you so much for coming on and spitting all of your wisdom. I think, I think, I think a lot of people are going to get a lot from this. So cool. Thank you. I really appreciate right. it. Thank you guys for listening. Thanks for having me. Thanks. I'll talk to you later. Bye. Bye. <laughs> This episode is sponsored by the Artist Academy Advanced Membership, a program for artists who want to up-level their art game by taking it from a hobby or a side hustle to a full-time art business. I've been a professional artist for over five years with paintings in several different countries and a client list that includes high-profile companies such as Bass Pro, O'Reilly's, Duck Commander, and many, many more. So I figured out what it takes to build an art business, and now my heart is set on teaching aspiring artists like you to do the same. Go to advancedmember.com, that's advancedmember.com to learn more. Don't forget to subscribe to the podcast and leave a review. Also, if you ever want to join us live and have your questions answered in real time by myself or featured guests, then just hop on over to facebook.com slash groups slash Artist Academy every Tuesday at 8 p.m. Central Standard Time. And I'll see you next week.